hope I hope you're having a great day today. I am totally so excited about today's sermon. I was trying to go to myself like at two in the morning. That was funny. I was actually preaching to myself. Um, this sermon today is called Turn. Um, let's pray. Father, I pray you for what you're about to do and um, for the lives you're about to touch through this sermon. And Lord God, I pray that you just permeate each heart, each spirit, each soul that is watching me today. Lord God, I pray that your grace and your love will just permeate everything. Surround us, God. Lord Jesus, speak to me, speak through me. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hi, guys. So, today's sermon is called Turn. Uh, don't worry, it's not a doomsday sermon, sermon when I say turn from your wicked ways or, or you know, you know, um, but... I'm using term today as an acronym. Time, understanding, revelation, and newness. And these are the things we need to navigate in our lives. First of all, let's talk about time. When we talk about time, um, there are two types of time that it speaks about in the Bible. It talks about Chronos time and Kir and and Kir. It talks about Chronos time and Kairos time. Chronos time is is the numerical time, numeric time, which is um, now it's 821. That's the Kronos time. The Kairos time is when you're talking about time in a broader sense, whereas you're talking about seasonal time, the, um, the aspect of time when you say time is, time is moving, um, uh, fast. So, God works in Kairos moments, not Kronos moments, which means uh, God doesn't work, um, Christ doesn't usually work in, in the, in the numeric time, in Kronos time, but he does work in Kairos time, which is, um, the time of life, the time of destiny. That, that's what the difference is. And when he talks about um, uh, you, uh, this, this uh, uh, Kairos time in history, he talks about, he means to, like, it's the it's the sense of time where it's kind of endless and God works in his, when we say God works in his time, we're talking about Kairos time, not Kronos time. Um, it's an extended period of life and living. At least I think that's what... <laughs> Um, Kairos is, I'm pretty sure, from my biblical study, you, you can, uh, look it up and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but he, but God is saying, uh, to navigate this tricky time or this tricky season, you need to be aware of the time. Not that a 
a 23 time, but you need to, to be aware of what season God has got you in right now. And he said, look beyond what you see or look beyond what you think you see. Because a lot of people are, a lot of Christians, I should say, are taking this time in history to mean the rapture and Jesus is coming back. And I'm not saying he isn't, and I'm not saying that, that that's wrong or that's a wrong assumption. But I really felt God saying last night, Look beyond the rapture. Look beyond uh, the health crisis. Look beyond the financial crisis. Look beyond what you see. He said, what do you hear? He's like, what do you hear me saying? What I said to you in the dark is going to come to light. He said, what he said look beyond oh jesus is coming because look at what he said in the bible he said he said to me look beyond that and he said he said i'm birthing something but people are too distracted to understand what I'm doing, and they're just waiting for me to crack the sky. But he's like, I want, he's like, I want to do more with my people in Kairos time than Kronos time. Um, he's like, like, in this time now, we need to just um, be aware that things are not always what they seem. And we, we seem to want to jump uh, to the conclusion that Jesus is coming because of coronavirus. And I'm not saying that he could not or should not come in this time. I totally believe in the rapture. But he, he said to me, look beyond that. He said, um, he said, I need you to look beyond that. And it is time to be sober. He said, be sober, be sober and diligent. Um, he said, for too long, we've let the world, we've let the devil, we even have let some churches play with our minds. And he said, it's time to man or woman up and be sober and understand that things are not always what they seem. Sometimes, uh, before the new beginning takes place, there is a breaking. Now it is, now for most people, it is the breaking season. It is the breaking season. And sometimes for, per, um, for someone's personal life, things are breaking, not because it's bad, but they're breaking for him to put together something new. The world, the world at large has been broken for a long time. Our financial uh, things have been crumbling for a long time. Our medical system has been broken for a long time. But, be, but before co coronavirus, we didn't see this. Coronavirus caused us to see the breaking, the financial crisis in the 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 economic crisis. We had no plan. We were going about our business, and we we didn't know how to have a plan. The 
the most plant we had was was keep food for a month in case of a storm. It revealed the breaking. Sometimes, sometimes that's what storms or situations come to reveal. They don't come to re- destroy you. They come to reveal what needs to be fixed in your life. And they come to teach you how strong you are as a society. I've never... I've had three pe- people in the la- past week tell me about the coronavirus and really talk. These are just uh, friends and people I know. Uh, people that work with me, people that are friends of it. so many people uh, talk to me about worry and, you know, about this new variant and whatever. And he's like, God's like, be soberly minded. It's not what you think. This is, I truly believe, the breaking before the blessing. Yes, God. This time now is the breaking before the blessing. Uh, 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 when when Jesus was at the Last Supper, um, he, he blessed it, he blessed it, and then he broke it. Quite often before God blesses you, he has to break you. So that is that is what's going on. Either God is breaking you or just life is breaking you. Because not everything comes from God. Sometimes things just come from life and it's designed to break you and to test you and to mold you. And that's what I... I think the gift uh, that coronavirus has has um, brought us, as as devastating as it is, it's taught us so many things about what we're not ready for, what we have to put in place, what you know, what strategies we should be working on. And it's because of this that we're going to be a better society. And I will, and I do believe coronavirus is not going to be here forever. So a lot of people say that, oh, it is, we're just going to have to live with it. It's like the flu. But no, it is a demonic plague from hell. And I believe that that God will remove it if we understand that um, the time the time we're living in is not what we think it is. It's not just oh the Lord's going to take us out of here at any minute. He wants to bring more to us, but I'll talk about that later. Um, Okay, so I talked about time, how it is an extended period of of history and destiny. Um, but and then now I'm going to talk about understanding. Um, we need at this time to to develop an understanding of God that we've never had before. And we can't totally understand God. We can't totally understand what what he's doing because he is the God of surprises. But I'm not I'm not tr- I'm not saying to understand God totally, but to understand how he moves in in your life and how he speaks to you in your life and how he rolls in your life. That is the kind of understanding that I mean, I don't mean to understand God and what he's doing because you cannot do, 
because you cannot do that. He is God and he only lets you understand the things you need to know because if you knew everything, you wouldn't step out. Um, but I'm saying to understand the rhythm of God. A lot of people do not understand the personal rhythm of God in their lives. They don't understand how he speaks in their lives, how he moves in their lives, how he operates in their lives. And yes, God is the same for everybody. He's no respect of person. But in life, he moves differently for each. He, he moves uh, in differently for each person. Let me explain something. Um, he worked according to the person personality and person's, you know, way of doing things. Now, I don't have uh, children, but I do have two nephews, and they're very different. One of them is very quiet, and one of them is more social and talkative. So, you, you can, if I want, let's say, my quiet nephew to pick up his toys, I may talk differently than I would to my more social nephew. You see, God is the same, but the way he's speaking to his people now, it's very, very unique to the person. And if you're not careful, you are going to miss it because it's no, it's no longer one size fits all. What it, what, what you have to begin to do is find out the rhythm of how God is speaking, and that is how you'll know um, how to navigate in your life. Because some. Um, for example, for me, um, I'm a music person. I love music, and I love arts, and I love movies. So, quite often, sometimes, quite often, he will give me a song before a sermon, or a title, or an artistic uh, expression or something. Uh, like, most of my early sermons were, for, for I think the first three years, they were songs. They came out of songs, and then I would go to the Bible and then get Revelation. But it started with a song because I'm a music person. So he moved with me in that. So he worked with my, uh, he worked with my particular bent and um, way, way of being to get his word across. God is using uncommon ministry tools to speak to his people. But if we are not careful, we'll miss it because we're looking for him to speak through his Bible. And make no mistake, he does speak through his word. But, but for some people, um, they're, they're not good at reading and sitting with the Bible. They're better at painting or watching movies. Or, so he will get his word to him, to them through that. So you need to be diligent and understanding how he speaks to you. And you need to be, um, not need, but um, I would advise you to be, um, to pray for the spirit of Issachar. 
which is to discern the times and seasons and pray for divine understanding. Lock the world away. Turn off social media. Um, do what you need to do to get alone with God and to get his divine understanding about what he wants or, or how he wants to move. He wants so much for the people to get kind of an understanding of the new ways he's moving, of the new ministries he wants to start up, of the new kind of ways of preaching and teaching and stuff. His words, his word will stay the same, but his methods will change. But the problem is we want things to go back to normal. He's saying, no, I'm changing. Change with me. And um, because he wants to blow our minds with what he wants to do. He wants to bring new ministry ideas uh, to people who have never ministered before, to non-preachers, to people you wouldn't expect. Uh, he wants to minister through art. He wants to minister through finances. Like it's just, it's just amazing. But that requires understanding. Uh, and revelation. Understanding uh, um, and revelation. Revelation is the, is the other one. Revelation is the revealed purpose and plan of God. He, he wants to give you divine revelation on your life and on on the part you play in the kingdom. That's what we need to walk to, through this uncertain time. And it doesn't need to be spooky. We just need to ask, Lord, what is, is what is society supposed to be doing now? What is the church supposed to be doing now? And how do I play a part in it? Reveal to me what you, how to do that. And he will do that in several different ways. It depends on who you are. There are so many different uh, ways that God reveals uh, himself and his divine understanding and his divine secrets to his people. And he said, he's saying to me right now, I want to reveal my secrets to you, but your ears are closed. Your, your ears are closed. All you want to do is go back to the same church service. But he's saying, I want more. I want to reveal things that you haven't thought of before. You, you haven't even tapped into before. I, I want to give you new revelation, but, but your ears are closed. He's saying, I need your ears to be open. I need your spiritual senses to be on alert. I want to show you stuff that you've never even seen before. He's like, um, he's like, I want to, I want to express things in, in you that you don't even know people, that you haven't even heard of before. I need you to get with me so I could teach you how I work through you. A lot of people don't know how God works through them just because they're expecting, oh, how do you hear God or whatever. They're expecting a one size fits all, but there's, but there's no one size fits all. It takes time. It takes um, getting to know him on a personal level. 
Oh, it takes just um, just a willingness to be open to what he wants to do in your life. And that's how you get to reveal, how you get to uh, know the will of God for your life. Through time, there is no, there is no one size fits all thing. Um, <coughs> it's, it's, um, it's time that you have to spend with God. And the time that you spend with God is is uh, the time where he will uh, reveal how he speaks to you, reveal how he works through you, reveal what things things are uh, good for you, reveal the proper Bible reading plan, or uh, reveal the proper way, because there's no one size fits all for this. It takes a personal relationships, relationship with God, and it takes continuously asking and praying uh, about what his will is for your life, and God is not stupid. He'll let you know. He'll let you know. Just don't be frustrated or give up, and sometimes the revelation will come in doing Revelation is not this spooky thing where you think, oh, well, you lock yourself in the room and you're like, I need revelation or whatever. No, revelation could happen. The, the revealing could happen when you're just going along your life. And it's not this spooky thing. It's a very natural very um, down to earth thing. Um, revelation is revelation just means uh, God revealing Himself um, to you and in your circumstances. That's what revelation it is is God revealing himself to you in your circumstances. And if God has to reveal himself to you and, you, and somebody says, I've got a prophetic word, I've got a revelation for you, and God, God has not revealed that to you, that probably is not revelation. Because God, God, really usually does not speak uh, through other people first. He speaks prophetically as a confirmation. Um, I found in my life at least he speaks prophetically as a confirmation um, to confirm his word. But you don't always need it. Quite often, the, the word of the Lord is the confirmation that he's speaking to you. The word that you hear in your spirit is the confirmation. So, to say that I'm waiting for God to confirm his word and that I need a sign to know that God is in it, he's saying... Just step out. You'll see what I, what I'm in or whatever. And if it, if whatever you feel, if whatever your, your uh, spirit is telling you is not of God, you'll soon find out. And he's saying, don't worry about making mistakes. Making mistakes is how you learn, and that's okay. And the N in turn 
uh, stands for newness. Oh, he wants to he wants to do so many new things that he hasn't done in a generation before. But the problem is we're not letting him. We're so so busy wanting to go back to uh, quote unquote normal that we're not making any room for the new. We're not um, really open to, to the new. We want the two songs. We want the prayer and go home. But there are new ministry platforms that he wants to open. There are new ways of ministering the gospel that he wants to bring about and we have to be open to to those and not only for pastors but for business leaders he is going to be exploding uh, through this economic crisis he wants to reveal ideas that you would have ever thought of before the newness that is inside you will breathe life to the society and to your world and your society. So that's what the newness is for. The newness is not for, oh, the Lord is doing something new or for a bragging point. It's actually to give out to the world and to understand that that he wants to 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 do something incredible something new in this society he wants to wants to give give society a whole new makeover a whole new love over a whole new joy over he wants to turn the tides around and he's saying I'm turning, I'm turning the tides. Everything you're seeing is not what it seems. He's like, I'm turning the tides. The blessing comes before the breaking. The reason why things are breaking down is because they needed to break down because God is going to build it up. Life broke it down, but God is going to build it up. And he's saying, I need you to be spiritually sensitive right now because I'm rebuilding. I needed to break the economy because it needed to be rebuilt. It wasn't working, but but we put pretty mask on it. So it looked like it was working, but it really wasn't. And same thing with the medical system. It looked like it was working, but it really wasn't. We weren't prepared to handle all the patients in the ICU and the bodies and things that kept going on. He's like, I tried several times. I tried with SARS. I tried with Ebola. I tried all these smaller diseases. Um, life tried all these uh, smaller diseases when they came because um, disease doesn't come from God but he uses it he said I tried to use all these smaller diseases but, but nothing changed when they went away it was like okay it, they're gone but this one stayed because we needed to fix our um, medical system. We needed to make it better. And after this is over, and it will be over because it's a plague repel and plagues have to, have to leave. After this is over, we'll have a much stronger medical system. We'll have a newness of life that we haven't seen before and we'll have a glory that will abide with us forever 
and his glory will always abide for, forever. But I sense that he that he wants to give us a new way to glory and new ministers, new business leaders that you wouldn't have ever thought of will come. Um, from the body of Christ, if we tune in to to the Kairos time of destiny, to what His time is, and His the, the span of God's life, which is forever, and. Because, you know, God was always here. He will always be here. He, he will remain forever. And um, that is a term. So he wants to be aware, us to be aware of the time. He wants to have, us to have understanding. He wants us to have revelation. And he wants us to realize that there's going to be a newness after this, a newness of life, a newness of joy, a newness of peace, a newness of love. Thank, thank you so much, guys. For joining me today, I really appreciate it. Always be like this. The Lord will perfect that concerning me. I'll sit away and I'll turn in my favor to send around. It will always be like this. The Lord will perfect that concerning me. Oh, sin will And I'll turn in my pain. It's turning around the it's all about the turn. He's turning the tides. The reason things are breaking down is because he's turning the tides. That's what he said. I'm turning the tides. I'm turning the tides for the uh, medical system. I'm turning the tides around for the economic system. I'm turning the tides for the relational system. He's turning the tides, and we need to be really aware 
of have an understanding of what he's actually he's actually willing to show us. How to have an understanding of how he reveals himself to us individually and societally because he wants to re he wants solutions to come from the church he wants solutions to come from his people but his people's uh most of our ears are too close and he wants us to really understand the times that we are living in, not just the, not just the, as it pertains to the rapture and the coming of Christ, but the new technologies he wants to bring about, the new relational systems, the new system of preaching he wants to bring about. He wants us, he, he so wants us to understand the Kairos time. His time, his time out of time, his time that runs forever, not just 24 hours. When we say God works in his own time, we're talking about God working in Kronos time, the time and season that lasts forever, that that's Kairos time. Kronos time is the chronological time on the clock. Like it is now. Um, it is now 901. That's the, the Kronos time now. The Kairos time is different for every season. So he's like, don't so much look at the fact that it's 901. Look at, um, in a broader sense, the time, the time and season that he has you in. And every time and season is different for every person. So every, every pastor, when he says, it's your time or whatever. Um, they, they're right, but they're only talking to a certain um, populace of people. You need to discern what time it is in your life, what season it is in your life. And no pastor, when pastors say that, that's revelatory for a certain number of people in in the congregation it is it is not it could be for everybody in the room but usually it is not for everybody in the room and every church has a different season god is working different things in different seasons for different churches and different people and he's saying i need you to discern the kairos time in your life and what I need you to be praying for and what your um, what your part is in the kingdom because many people don't know what part they play in the kingdom and every Christian has a part to play in the kingdom every church like I said a few weeks ago has a part to play every pastor Every business leader, every hairdresser, every everybody has a part to play in the kingdom, and he's and he's wanting you to discern the Kairos time in your life because his Kairos time goes on forever. His divine timing, his Kairos time, goes on forever. Although Kronos time is only 24 hours, Kairos time is God's time and it goes on forever. 
So, what are you supposed to do with um, the Kronos time he's given you, and how did that? How does that fit into the bigger picture? And for parents, uh, what are you supposed to be um, giving to your children so that they can operate in their king, kingdom authority? What are you supposed to be instilling in your children? And it could, and it could be anything. So. So when they're little, you, he's saying for parents, there are divine seeds in your children that are laying dormant, and I need you as their parent to seek me and, and wake them up. I've given you a divine assignment to wake up the seeds in your children, not, not to fulfill your assignment that you didn't fulfill, but to fulfill their assignment to, to be the catalyst for God to work in their lives. Your children are not designed, children are not designed to fulfill the vision and the assignment of their, that their parents didn't fill. Like, my vision and assignment was to um, be in sports, but I didn't make the team, so I'm making my son play football because he needs to fulfill my dream. No! He needs to fulfill his own assignment. You need to work, work out those issues for yourself and stop putting them on your son. It's not his assignment. He's designed to work on c computers. He's designed to sing. He's designed to do business, not play football. Too many parents, I don't know wh where I'm getting this from because I don't have children, but the Lord is speaking to parents. Too many parents are expecting their kids to do uh, what they didn't do. And the Lord says, stop that because you are killing your child's destiny. Because if they do something that they're not designed to do, you're killing them. Because the purpose that they are, they are designed to do is laying dormant while, while you are fulfilling some long ago fantasy and the Lord is saying to stop that. I need your your children or the children I've entrusted to you to fulfill my purpose, not yours. And your job as a parent, your main job is to show them me and guide them to their purpose to my purpose for their lives, to be little God guiders, not only to me, but to my purpose for their li lives. And the Lord says, get a revelation of who your children are supposed to be, are supposed to be, how they're bent, how they're fashioned, so you can um, put them in things that are divinely orchestrated, not busy work. The Lord's saying, enough with the busy work. I need you to do purposeful work. Because I need them to do purposeful work. And he's saying that to the adults. He's saying, enough to just try and keep your schedule. He's saying, everything that you do must have a purpose. Yes, Lord. He said, everything that you do from the time you wake up in the morning must have a divine assignment. 
even your laundry, even the things that we all have to do, they must be leading to something. You're, you're doing your laundry because then you'll, you'll have clothes to wear to um, go to that business meeting or, or you know, that, that thing that will lead you towards your destiny. He said, every activity in your life needs to be purposeful. He's saying, gone are the days where you can just do stuff to keep busy. He's saying, for too long, we've done stuff to keep busy. And he's saying, no more. Every activity you do needs to have a, a divine assignment attached to it. You are too precious to just do busy work. You are worth more than that. Thank you, Lord. Okay, guys, I'll see you later. Bye. Sooner or later, he'll turn in my favor. It's turning around for me. Happy Resurrection Sunday or Easter if, if any if you guys are more familiar with that term. Have a wonderful day.